Inspirational Creatives, episode 153. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire, and you're listening to the Inspirational Creatives Podcast with Rob Lawrence. Welcome to Inspirational Creatives. I'm your host, Rob Lawrence. Join me every Friday as I chat with successful artists, producers, and creative entrepreneurs who share powerful stories and strategies. They can help you to create the life that you want. Listen each week as these inspirational creatives show you how to take your creativity to the next level. You'll learn how to create a sustainable business that inspires others and gives you the financial freedom and lifestyle that you want. Thanks for listening. Make sure you sign up at inspirationalcreatives.com to get free exclusive bonus material. And now on with the show. My guest today is someone I was kindly introduced to by a previous guest and listener, Jan Murray. He's the founder of a very attractive online magazine that claims to help you to break from the daily grind towards developing your own business by offering inspirational stories and actionable strategies from the very best. He's interviewed Richard Branson, Seth Godin, Tim Ferriss and Ariana Huffington, to name but a few. And on Instagram right now, he has over 100,000 followers. The magazine, which is specifically designed for tablets and smartphones, is called Founder Mag, without the E. So I'm delighted to introduce to you today the founder of Founder, Nathan Chan. Nathan, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Rob. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Um, Just a heads up, my man, we have over 800,000 followers on Instagram, man. Wow. Wow. 800,000. I need to get my research up to date. That's amazing. (laughs) Yeah, it's all good. So let's start here. Has founding Founder Mag changed your life? And if so, how? Wow. Um, Well, probably it's been the most uh, biggest personal accomplishment of mine to date. Uh, Before I started the magazine, never really achieved much in life, to be honest, Rob. Um, and that's why I think, um, you know, we're doing a reasonable job with, with everything we're doing because I'm just so passionate about this space. I'm so passionate about this work and, and I really love helping people and, uh, just have fell in love with the process. But yeah, before that, um, you know, I never really got good grades at school or university, um, you know, was never particularly that talented at sport, um, used to win a few trophies when I played table tennis when I was a younger kid. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, never really was much of a go-getter or achiever until um, I started the magazine and, and really fell in love with this whole process and also building a business. Um, so, yeah, it's been really game-changing, man, and uh, I feel very, very blessed to uh, speak to the people I do to work Uh, with the people that I do to uh, bring everything that we do together. And, uh, yeah, it's been an amazing journey so far, man. And it's uh, the most exciting thing is I just feel like we're only just scratching the surface of what's possible. Yeah, absolutely. So what's it really like to be you today? What are your biggest challenges and what do you find you get stuck with with the work that you do? I think... Our biggest challenges um, right now that we're focusing on is, one, being able to effectively utilize uh, the size of our audience and really capitalize on serving our audience uh, through many different products. Right now, um, you know, our email database is over 250,000, which we've grown in about 18 months or a year and a half, Mm. Um, you know, we've just got uh, hundreds and thousands, you know, millions of people that consume our content every single month. Um, The real challenge for us is is to be able to scale product. But here's the thing, right? Um, So we've got the magazine uh, on the front end. We've got the blog, the podcast, uh, you know, social. They're all marketing channels. But on the back end, actual products is the magazine is a front end product. We've got a recurring product uh, called Founders Club. So it's it's uh, pretty much a community plus content behind a paywall. Uh, plus I've got an Instagram course and working on two other courses right now and also a physical book. But 
the the thing is, right, I've got this massive audience, people are asking for help with so many different things, and I just want to roll out as many courses around that um, as possible. Like we need a course on productivity, we need a course on hiring online, we need a course on finance, we need a course on content marketing, we need a course on how to start an online business, all these other courses that I know that we need to create for our audience to truly serve them. Um, and, and I know they're looking for, I know um, there's many people that want certain things from us that we can't give to them right now. And for Founder to be a truly scalable asset and, uh, you know, a, a true traditional hybrid kind of digital media company, I can't teach all those courses like probably many people that you are familiar with and I'm familiar with in our space in this online entrepreneurship, online marketing info product space is generally people build up an audience and then they teach all the courses, but that's not a scalable asset. That's a cash flow based business and I want to build an asset based business. So the challenge for us is one, having a, creating more product as fast as possible and two, just being able to do that really well. So we're going to have to, um, you were just working, getting people internally to do a lot of teaching, not just me. And then also we're going to um, start finding certain people to collaborate and work with to create these courses. But it'll be a bit tricky to do um, a profit split. And yeah, it's just, some, it's just, it's just tough right now. And then also an, a challenge for me personally is, um, like this time last year, it was just me, you know, running the company. Now we have seven people full time mm. and uh, no sign of slowing down on the hiring front. Probably by the end of this year, we'll probably have nine to 10 full time. So, um, yeah, that, that in and you know, of itself, Rob, um, you know, I'm a first time entrepreneur. Before I started found, I knew nothing about business, entrepreneurship, publishing, apps, design, content, editorial, you name it. So um, knew nothing about leadership or what it means to actually lead a team and uh, really build an effective team. So that's a, a massive challenge for me right now as well. Yeah, sure. Um, how has that been for you? I mean, you lead to being a first timer in, in many areas there. And I can imagine someone seeing you or hearing about you for the first time, they must think, particularly with the, the, the rapid amount of growth that you've had in terms of your subscriber and interest base, I can imagine people seeing you and going, wow, he's got a lot of things right the first time here to have grown so quickly and to have come out the gates with something so exceptional. What do you think that the keys to your success have been in that process in terms of that rapid growth and getting things right? But also what have been some of the, the epic failures that you've also had? Because I'm sure it hasn't all been easy. No, definitely, definitely not, Rob. It's been um, uh, very, very difficult. But I was lucky to fall on my face a couple of times in the early days um, and and quickly learnt from, from some of these things. So... I think one of the first things that that's really helped uh, is I always, always, always have a really good sense of intuition and following my gut, and that's um, that's led me this far, Rob. Without a doubt, continuously, always, always, always try and follow my gut. But also at the same time, I really enjoy people. So ever since I started. Uh, the magazine. Um, you know, I, I went out and I, I found mentors very quickly and started to build a, an amazing network. And now I'm privileged and lucky enough um, to have a non-official kind of advisory board of friends that I can always go to when I when I need help and uh, when I have ideas I want to bounce around. And Sometimes, depending on the decision, like I like to move fast and speed and urgency is very important. But at the same time, if it's a reasonably sized decision, I will speak to, you know, maybe two to five or maybe even 10 different people to get their opinion. Um, and that seems to always help me be right, you know, 75% of the time. And as long as if, you know, I'm right 75% of the time, um, we can keep moving forward and we can keep winning. 
So, you know, that's a big piece of it. I, you know, I don't think I know the answers and I openly admit that I don't know the answers. So I'm always still asking for help, always trying to learn. And then I think another massive advantage that I've had is I get to speak to just these incredibly successful people on like on a daily basis. We're talking multimillionaires, billionaires, you know, people that have done such incredible things that um, I just ask them what's up, what the things that I'm struggling with. You know, mm. a lot of questions I'm asking right now when I interview people for the magazine and the podcast are leadership style questions because, or scale questions or team building questions or hiring questions because these are the things that I'm going through right now. So that um, really helps me as well. I guess I also think that I have just a naturally good intuition uh, for content because we're in the content space and I just love what I do so much. This is an obsession, Rob. Mm. Like I I work pretty hard and uh, I really, really love what I do. This is what I was born to do uh, and um, I just it's just such an obsession that I, I love content and I'm constantly speaking to people in our community uh, so much to the point that I really know what they want and I understand what they want and I understand their problems and um, to a certain extent I'm scratching my own itch as well. So mm. I guess with the combination of all those things, um, that's how we're kind of doing okay. Uh, in regards to where we haven't done okay and, you know, where I have fell on my face. I've got heaps of stories, man. Um, there's a few epic fails in particular. Uh, when I first started the magazine, it actually wasn't called uh, Founder Magazine. It was actually called uh, Key to Success, which was an epic fail of a name. <laughs> and uh, we actually ended up being sued by one of the biggest, uh, largest um, business magazines in the States. Now, mm. I can't say who it was, mm. but um, pretty much, um, you know, it, this was this was shocking, man. Like, you know, I had this magazine. I launched it while I was working my day job on the side. And, uh, you know, I got um, an email when I woke up four months in, just, you know, just plodding along. And uh, it said, you know, you're being sued. Um, let me represent you from some lawyer that was trying to, uh, uh, you know, acquire a, a, new, a new client. Uh, so, you know, that I ended up being served, got my FedEx package, and I was being sued for trademark infringement. So, you know, that was an epic fail, um, but luckily recovered and, and, you know, changed the name and replaced everything. And it was so, so early in the days of, of starting Founder, you know, the magazine at that time. I only had a magazine. I had a, a very basic website, you know, social media presence, but you know, it was, it was so minuscule. It's, you know, for the first year, our, our social wasn't even a focus. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's been a big epic fail. Um, I remember at one point in time when we started to really kick things off on Instagram and in the first four months we had at least, you know, 100,000 followers. We've been on Instagram now for about 20 months and mm -hmm. uh, we've built it from zero to 800K plus on track to do be it a million followers by the end of this year quite easily and um yeah i remember i thought i had this uh, crazy idea that um maybe i could sell t-shirts because when i posted once um me wearing a found t-shirt everybody wanted one because it said on the back i got 99 problems but a boss ain't one <laughs> and um i posted it every, like i got a hundred hundreds and hundreds of comments people saying where can i buy one i went on teespring created it Guess how many people bought, Rob? No idea. Four people bought, <laughs> and this is you know in front of our you know, hundred thousand people seeing it, and well, it wouldn't be a hundred thousand, but at least twenty, thirty thousand seeing it because yeah. I posted a few times, yeah. and hundreds of comments, people saying they love it, tagging their friends, and four people bought it, <laughs> and two of those people uh, was Chris Ducker and Urs. Oh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a great story. That's fantastic. Um, going back to when you were being sued, I mean, I must have taken some guts to get through that and, and still proceed with your idea. What do you think helped you get through that time? Um, I was really lucky that in the sense 
the company that I was working for, they were extremely supportive of my side hustle. Uh, in particular, um, the CEO of the company, we ended up um, becoming friends and, and forming a really strong, really awesome relationship. Uh, now he's like a mentor to me, and uh, this company is a three hundred million dollar company. He's been an entrepreneur for twenty five, thirty plus years, and he helped me through it. And then I had another mentor that I acquired in the early days that had been sued also mm. by an American company for a similar type uh, incident for trademark infringement. So he helped me work through it too. Um, and uh, yeah, it was uh, one of the most stressful times of my life, man. Uh, in the end, it was a blessing in disguise because founders are much better name. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, though, Rob, we're still kind of paying for that mistake in the sense that we don't have all the social media handles to say founder. I'm just going through a really costly exercise um, to try and acquire them. We don't have founder.com. That's a whole nother story. Mm. And uh, the person that owns that, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> Probably shouldn't be talking about. And uh, it was it was really traumatic. What kept me going? Well, I just kind of had to get out of it. Um, and once I, it had all been said and done, you know, the, the thing that kept me going, Rob, even in the early days, even when, you know, we only had two readers of the magazine um, and maybe 10 after the first month was those were subscribers, man, paying to get a monthly magazine. And I just never stopped. Yeah. And just like still to this day, like uh, when we were sued, I remember we were two weeks behind on one of our monthly. So we're a monthly publication. Yeah. And we uh, ship every single month at the middle of the month. And uh, during the lawsuit period where we had to go through changing the name and stuff, um, instead of a four-week gap in between a magazine issue, there was a six-week gap. Mm -hmm. And we actually um, – that was the only time we've ever missed like a shipping date. And we actually even backdated it. So one month we produced uh, two issues in two weeks. Mm. Uh, two issues in four weeks, sorry, to uh, catch up and make up for it. And still to this day, Rob, um, you know, we've just been producing the magazine the middle of every month, three and a half years later, haven't missed a shipping date and uh, just don't like letting people down, especially when they're paid customers. Yeah, absolutely. So I'd love to talk to you a bit about the process of how you put the magazine together. But before I go there, uh, can you remember the moment when you came up with the idea specifically for the magazine? Yeah, look, I wish um, I could tell you I had a light bulb moment, Rob. Um, like many people, before I started, before I, you know, started a business, I always thought that maybe I'd have some magical light bulb moment where I was like, "Oh yeah, this is what I'm going to do. This is my destiny." <laughs> um, no, it wasn't like that at all. <laughs> it, to be honest, it was just um, just a natural kind of evolution. Uh, I came up with the idea for the magazine at first because I thought I wanted to create a digital magazine, didn't even know it was going to be about uh, entrepreneurship. At first, it was going to be on horse racing. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, like uh, Ascot, mm -hmm. yeah, we have the Melbourne Cup here and it's massive, just as big as Ascot. And, um, yeah, I'm a really big fan of horse racing. I got like a 1% share in a horse uh, during spring carnival. You know, every weekend I'm at the races with my friends, you know, having a good time. And, uh, you know, I thought it would be a brilliant idea to create this horse racing magazine with my housemate at the time who's a horse racing journalist. And uh, I'll take care of the tech and marketing and he can take care of the content. Had no idea that I'd be running, you know, the, and producing the amount of content that we produce now. And um, that was the idea, dude. It was literally, I need to create a digital magazine. I think this is like a cool business idea. And uh, what ended up happening was he pulled the pin uh, because he got a full-time job. He was just freelancing and his full-time job in the contract, he couldn't do side hustles or anything else on the side or any other freelance stuff. So what happened was, that idea kind of went down the drain. And then, um, I don't know, I, I just had a list of ideas. I was thinking of doing maybe a men's lifestyle magazine and then maybe one on fashion because um, at the time I was, I, you know, I'm a metrosexual kind of guy. I, I like clothes, not as much, 
I liked them a lot more back then, like shopping and, you know, wearing nice clothes. Mm. Now I, you know, still uh, like that, but not, it's not passion anymore. It used to actually be something I was really passionate about. And, um, yeah, then I just kind of, you know, started just – Going down the path that we all do, I think, you know, as, um, uh, you know, oh, this happens to a lot of people, I'm sure, where you just start listening to a lot of podcasts and reading a lot of blogs and, you mm. know, um, you start uh, getting excited and nothing really happens and <laughs> you don't really do much and uh, that's what was happening to me. And then I thought, you know what, um, uh, you know, I wonder if there's a magazine out there for young, targeting young entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, novice stage entrepreneurs. I started reading about all this stuff and listening to all these podcasts and reading blogs, you know, written, you know checking out Pat Flynn's website and stuff like that. Mm. And I identified that there wasn't. And that's when I kind of was just like, maybe I'm onto something here. Um, and then uh, just uh, ended up launching the magazine. It took me... Oh, it took me – I remember I purchased the uh, publishing software that allowed me to uh, build the app and also maintain the app uh, in June 2012. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't launch the magazine till March 2013. So we've been in business since March 2013. So – yeah, that's nine months of time wasted, dude. Just <laughs> stuffing around, working out the idea, what it's going to be. Um, you know, didn't really have that much money at the time either because I love to travel um, and I just used to live off my credit card and just travel all the time and it was really dumb. And, uh, yeah, I just, you know, two grand to, to purchase the uh, uh, magazine software because – I was just really, really sick of, of the work I was doing that didn't fulfill me. And, um, yeah, it was a real blessing in disguise. You know, I got lucky. Um, well, you know, you make your own luck. But, mm. yeah, that's um, how the idea came about. Does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. That's great. It's really insightful, actually. What do you think the with the recent success that you've had so far, uh, what do you think the turning point was, if there was one at all? If we go work backwards between now and um, three and a half years ago, March 2013, I think the last pivotal turning point that we had was getting featured on a few big podcasts. We were featured on Pat Flynn's and also John Lee Dumas's. That was a big pivotal turning point uh, this time. No, not this time last year, probably about 16 months ago. Mm -hmm. um, another one even like about a year ago was when I went to the States. So I just came back from the States. My thing is now I go to the States once or twice a year. I'm definitely always in the middle of the year just to hang out and meet like-minded entrepreneurs and catch up with people and learn because in the States, people just think a hundred times bigger compared to Australia. So when I went last year, that was extremely game changing. As mentioned, I think I said, you know, this time last year was just me. Um, then when I came back from the States, you know, I made our first full-time hire and really started to blow stuff up. Uh, another pivotal turning point was when we found webinars also in this past year. They've been majorly game-changing for our business. Then before that, another pivotal turning point was when we found Instagram. So what, 20 months ago, um, early 2015, late 2014, we found Instagram. Uh, the podcast has um, really started to take off only now so that's been um just a build up of momentum same with our instagram but our instagram really has taken off which has really been able to grow the business and then i guess if you trace that back even further uh rob you know i left my job um took me a year so i left my job uh, mid 2014 um, that freed me up so that was a big turning point because I could work on the business full time and then even before that uh, and one of the biggest turning points in our first um, thing that really helped kick us off was um, when we got the the uh, interview with Richard Branson and could feature him on the front cover and that's uh, been that was that was that was our first big win. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know we worked backwards, but our first big win was the feature with Richard Branson and being able to use that as the free magazine issue and just blasting that everywhere and just using it to build ridiculous amounts of trust. 
what's really helped us, Rob, and I'll tell you, I if if I uh, we get we do get asked this a little bit, you know, what's what's the secret source for found? I'll tell you it, what what the secret source is if you want if people want to do what we have done with a brand uh, and a, a content based brand. Number one, we created a magazine. A magazine, I didn't know it at the time, but has ridiculous amounts of influence that people take very, very seriously. Mm. Um, so having that magazine has been a massive game changer for, for, for our entrepreneurial startup founder brand. And then number two has been we've always placed a ridiculous amount of emphasis on design. I'm obsessed with great design. Uh, you know, you you threw us a very nice compliment about the design of our magazine. Um, I take pride in that. I take pride in uh, all of the marketing collateral we put out, whether it's a magazine issue, whether it's an ebook, whether it's a podcast cover art, whether it's a quote, whether it's our website, you name it. We pay ridiculous amounts of attention to our website. So much to the point that, you know, um, we're rolling out a new website uh, literally hopefully next week and that's that's costing, a, 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 I think, a pretty decent amount of money. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to cost about 30K US to, 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 uh, to do this one mm-hmm. and it's just the website, mm-hmm. just in WordPress and – you know, it's going to be next level. Um, so we place a ridiculous amount of emphasis in design. Uh, and then the next thing we do is we work with a lot of influencers and align ourselves with influencers, almost to the point that uh, they can be perceived as ambassadors for the brand, kind of like, you know, um, like what Oprah did. So Oprah, the one of the reasons that she became famous and how um, and and how she kickstarted her influence was she created a talk show and she started to interview successful people. But um, as time went on, more and more people wanted to hear what Oprah had to say, and and you know it because she was associated with all these successful people. Then she herself and the Oprah network became this massive influential talk show, mm. and um, the, the content that she produces. So that's all we've done with Founder is we find you know the rock stars of our industry and we interview them. We extract a ton of gold and they share a ton of gold, which gives us good content. And then we plaster it everywhere that we've featured these people and uh, we align ourselves with them. So that just builds ridiculous amounts of trust very, very fast. And then lastly, Rob, the last part of what we do that that I think is our secret source is our content is just really, really good. Like we go above and beyond what anyone would expect with our content. We make our free stuff so good that we could charge for it. Um, Our blog, we just give it all away. Like we give away stuff that we could easily, easily charge for and that just builds ridiculous amounts of trust and it keeps people coming back. So we just go above and beyond with with the content and really, really just work really hard to produce really valuable stuff. So amazing content, utilizing influencers and aligning yourself with them, having a magazine, placing a high importance and emphasis on design. And, um, you know, I think that's what's really um, helped us uh, achieve everything that we've achieved so far. But you know what, Rob, I don't, I definitely don't want to drink uh, our own Kool-Aid, bro. And I really <laughs> want to say that we do a lot of things wrong and we're still learning and, uh, you know, we've got a lot of room to move and uh, we're just scratching the surface, man. That's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing your philosophy there. That was really, really sort of insightful, that secret source and, and, and what you feel the uh, and what you believe are the keys to, to your success so far. Uh, long way it continue. Um, who's the most surprising guest you've had on the magazine so far? Hard to say. To be honest, Rob, I don't manage the magazine anymore. Um, I want, someone in our team, her name's Asia. Uh, she's our community manager and publishing manager. She's just an absolute superstar. She manages the magazine, but probably one that comes to mind, uh, which I really, um, really, really liked, it was um, David Cancel. So he's um, uh, a founder that's created and sold five companies in the past 10, 15 years. Mm. And he's just an absolute superstar. 
I, I just thought it was a fascinating interview, the way he's built and sells companies. And I think the most counterintuitive thing um, he shared with us from the magazine was that we asked him, you know, how do you just build and sell these companies so fast in the space of in 12 to 18 months usually is your turnaround time. He says that um, it's quite simple. He never actually looks to sell these companies. He just he just focuses so hard on just building a, a company that scales so extremely quickly that um, it attracts people to want to buy that he has people knocking on his door always. Hmm. Fascinating. Hmm. That's genuinely insightful, actually. Um, you mentioned design just a moment ago. Uh, what's your philosophy behind good design and how did the design aspect integrate itself into the founder mag as it is today? To create the magazine, I needed a designer and I couldn't afford to hire a designer locally here in Melbourne, Australia. So I looked to outsource it. I went through three different graphic designers and the third one that I ended up uh, finishing up with was uh, Karan Jane. And uh, Karan has uh, become a dear friend of mine and he still works with us till this day. Um, and he taught me the importance and emphasis on amazing design. And uh, because of him, um, that really set the I guess the playbook of of what you see today across all a founder. Now, Karan doesn't design every single thing that we put out. He does design a lot of it though. Probably mm. about seventy five percent of our marketing collateral he designs. He doesn't do any of the social media content, but he does anything um, lead magnet based. Uh, you know, any ebooks, guides, you know, we've got at least 10 to 15 lead magnets. And also um, we found an amazing designer that does all our web stuff and and uh, he's incredible. So, yeah, across those two guys, you know, they, they, we got a pretty high standard for design. But um, how did I work it out? It, purely from just speaking to, to Karan, him teaching me that um, if you place high importance, and I can't stress this enough, if you pay high importance and invest in the design of your brand early on, it will pay dividends ridiculously in the long term and it has for us and that was one of the best decisions I ever made in the early days. I spent the extra money to go above and beyond what people would expect or what was average, what was the status quo, what was okay, what was not bad. I just wanted people to be like, wow, this is cool. And um, that's what we've been able to achieve since day one and still do to this day. And uh, that's really paid ridiculous amounts of dividends. And it kind of makes sense now, right? Like I think great design is is almost a commodity, Rob. Like you look at Apple and, you know, you go to the app store in particular like if you want to download an app, like the magazine is an app, and if you want to download an app, if the even the logo looks shitty or the screenshots look shitty, like you're not going to download it. You don't trust it. It's just some shitty thing that someone's put together. Like that's that's just unfortunately a sad truth. Um, that's the first thing that people look at. It's the it's the it's the book cover. It's the magazine cover. You don't even look at picking up the book unless maybe even the cover or the copy, the title of the headline attracts you. So it's very very important um, that you you place a, a strong emphasis on design and and uh, we always have and and if you look at the most greatest startups out there like Airbnb Uber Facebook Dropbox they all have brilliant design it has to be part of if you're looking to build an extremely successful scalable company an amazing asset, Part of it, it just it just has to happen. I believe now that that you have great design and and you know, founder probably won't be the first and only business I create. I I anticipate I'll create some more and you know in those other businesses I will follow suit with amazing design. Whether it's you know a SaaS based company or whether it's an e commerce based company, doesn't matter. Has to have amazing design. Yeah, absolutely fascinating. So. 
it'd be rude of me not to ask you about the success you've had with Instagram being on a podcast for creatively minded folks. How did you get into Instagram? And um, could you describe to me a little bit about how it's been working for you? Yeah, sure. So I've been on Instagram since November 2014, so I think about 20 months. And uh, what happened was uh, I had a few friends, so I just left my day job. And um, you know, a few months after I'd left my day job, and I was just you know kind of stumbling along and and looking for a channel that we could use because I think um, you know when you're first starting out and you want to grow your product or service, you need to have a couple of channels. Um, where you have a pipeline or a funnel and you just just feed the hell out of that. And um, pretty much I didn't really have that pipeline yet, Rob, so I was looking to build that out and I was trying many different channels and that's what good marketing is. You throw things against the wall and you see what sticks. And um, what happened was Instagram was just one of those channels that I tested. I was trying blogging. I was trying buying Facebook ads. I was trying Twitter. I was trying Pinterest and nothing seemed to be working. But uh, when we jumped on Instagram, things really started to take off very, very quickly. Uh, I remember the first time I tested it, you know, I saw our sales subscriptions for the magazine spike. We made an extra couple hundred dollars that day because just doing a few posts on Instagram. And that's when I knew I was on to something. Mm. And um, that took me down this path of just really, just really learning how to master it. And um, what, you know, the, the, the advice that we give is, first of all, um, if you'd like to know more, I could talk about this all day, but we do have a free resource for people. Um, is that okay if I mention it? Absolutely. Please do. Awesome. So there's a free resource that we have because we do get asked this question a lot. If you go to foundermag, F-O-U-N-D-R-M-A-G.com forward slash free, uh, foundermag.com forward slash free, we have a, like an epic in-depth guide. And, you know, if you're listening to this interview this far in um, and we're talking about design, you'll see once you flip through the pages of uh, this guide how much emphasis we place on design. It's just one of, you know, pieces that we put out. And um, it's an in-depth guide. But anyways, long story short, if you, you know, if you want to be able to rapidly grow an Instagram page and utilize it to grow your business, um, first things first, you have to be consistent. You have to produce con- like amazing content on a consistent basis at scale. So we produce I think uh, anywhere between, you know, we post seven to eight times a day on average. And because we post so much at quality content, it allows us to grow very fast. Our stuff looks good. Instagram's a very visual platform, so you always have to make sure your stuff uh, looks great because people aren't going to trust you and they're not going to follow you. Uh, we know our audience really well. We stumbled upon quotes, startup tips and facts uh, for our industry, for some reason, that really, really works well. Mm. And um, people love sharing them and they love ta- tagging in their friends. And then another thing that we've done very, very well, and I just want to reiterate on the quotes piece, you don't have to post quotes. Um, depending on the industry or niche you're in, you just have to post cool stuff for your audience on your Instagram that looks mm. good on a consistent basis. And then another thing that we've done with a lot of success is finding – other Instagram pages and accounts to team up with and share our content and we share theirs like partnerships. Mm. And that's been a a massive, massive, massive game changer to really, really grow things. So, um, yeah, you know, that's, that's in essence a lot of what we've done, Rob. Um, you know, I I could talk about it for (laughs) forever, but, uh, (laughs) yeah, that, that's in a nutshell what we've done. Yeah, no, I'd love to talk with you more on that. So maybe another time. Yeah. Um, so knowing what you know now, if you was to do it all again, what would you advise your younger self? What would you do differently? Mm. I think I think one thing that I'd definitely do is um, acquire all the social media handles for whatever the business is. I think that's been a really rookie mistake 
that I made. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we launched as founder. Now let's go and get everything founder. So facebook.com forward slash founder, mm -hmm. Instagram.com forward slash founder, Twitter.com forward slash founder. Um, I think that's been a big one that I wish. I wish that uh, we started focusing on creating uh, courses on the back end much earlier. I wish that uh, we started building our email list much earlier. I wish that we started getting better at email marketing much earlier. Um, oh, geez, there's so much, dude. Uh, you know, but here's the thing, right, Rob? Um, you know, every single mistake, every single thing that I'm learning, it's it's a process, right? And you have to be patient. I think so many people aren't patient. So I'm massive on speed and I'm massive on urgency. Like, you know, now that I've got back after traveling for five weeks, I had a big meeting with the team and I was like, guys, we need to level up. We need to blow shit up again. Mm. And I uh, just really, you know, we need to roll out, I think, three to four products before the end of this year and do a launch for one of it, like for, and for, for another product that we already have it out in the marketplace. Mm. And then the guys are probably all thinking, oh, Jesus Christ, we've got so much stuff to do. So I'm all about speed. I'm all about urgency. But at the same time, I think it's really important to be patient with the things that you're doing. And, and, and when you're building a business, you have to think of it like, putting together a house, you know, building it brick by brick. So when I first started, you know, the business, I just focused on the magazine and then I mastered it and then I moved on to the next thing. So that was one brick. And then, you know, I started focusing on social media. We got really good on Instagram and Twitter. That was one thing, a couple more bricks. Then we, you know, started producing the podcast. Now podcast is doing quite well. So that's another brick. And then we started to hire a team and we started to produce epic blog posts and produce epic guides and, you know, get even better with content in other forms, another brick. And, you know, every single thing that we've done, we've always kept systems to keep them going. So we never stop. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, you just got to be patient, man, one step at a time. You know, I wish that we had 10 products out in the marketplace right now and, you know, we could 100x the business, like literally probably not 100x but um, at least 20x um, the, the business right now. We've, and we, we, we just can't. We just got to be patient and we just got to go through the motions and develop one product at a time and, you know, speak to people, find out what they like about it, find out what they don't, find out why they bought, find out what they like the most, find out how we can give them better results and more results, find out what the price point is, test the price point, test the best way to market it, test the funnel, test the best way to sell it um, and then we move on to the next one you know and you know add that add that to a nurture sequence and add it as a bundle add it as a one click upsell here you know all these different things it's just like one thing at a time so it's all about patience that's awesome um, before I ask you about where our listener can find out more about you and your magazine what's been the most inspirational moment you've had recently uh, probably this trip that I just went on um I um, just had this amazing thought, you know, um, when I was coming home from work today, because it's 9 p.m. here, uh, that like, you know, I was so lucky to go away and just hang out with super successful entrepreneurs and learn from all sorts of crazy, interesting people. One in particular, his name was Tom, his name's Tom Bilyeu, and uh, he runs this company called uh, Quest Nutrition, and they do protein bars and all sorts of nutritional bars and food. And, uh, you know, they're, they're valued at a billion dollar company that he built in, I think, six years. Wow. And uh, it's like one of the fastest growing companies in America. And, uh, you know, just to be able to sit at a, at a table with someone like that, that has achieved so much, so much incredible success, um, if I were to compare it to myself, and, you know, just have... A conversation, an amazing conversation like me or you as equals and uh, just learn a shit ton and be super inspired. Fabulous. So where can our listener find out more about you and your magazine, of course, Nathan? Uh, so if people want to find out more, you can just go to foundermag, F-O-U-N-D-R mag uh, dot com. And uh, yeah, we've got a ton of resources and stuff if people want help. 
That's fantastic. Well, I appreciate it's late in your evening. You've just got back from traveling and you're incredibly humble. So thank you so much for your time today, Nathan. Oh, you're welcome, Rob. Thank you so much for having me, man. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for your time. Thanks for listening. Nothing beats the stories and advice of an expert to help you raise your creative game. I would love to know what you thought about today's episode, so don't forget to subscribe in iTunes where you can rate and review the show. If you like this episode, I invite you to share it on Facebook or Twitter with the one person you know who will benefit from the wisdom shared here today. You can find the show notes on inspirationalcreatives.com forward slash podcast. If you have a burning question or a great idea for a guest, head on over to inspirationalcreatives.com forward slash contact where you can connect with me there. 